Hi everybody, welcome back to the Dally Society. Today we're going to talk about my favourite free top patterns, so stay tuned. Today we're spoilt for weather here, it's perfect mid-20s temperature, so I thought I'd bring you out into my courtyard. Dog has decided to, uh, this is me everybody, he's decided to get into the shot as well, but that's fine. I'm going to talk about my favourite free patterns. I know recently I did a skirt uh, free pattern episode that you guys all loved, and I am going to bring you my favourite woven top patterns, and I've also got a favourite knit top patterns coming very soon as well. So these are ones that I've made recently that I have decided to have a go at making and maybe hacking here and there and modifying little bits and pieces. So I wanted to make sure that before I sewed them up that I was happy with them before I brought them out to you guys. I know that there are a lot of free patterns on YouTube. Um, a lot of YouTubers will spend time promoting free patterns that they've found on the internet. And I know from the past that a lot of these patterns I might have jumped on and made as well and been really disappointed with the either the fit or there might be something lacking with instructions, um, even size inclusivity, that kind of thing. So I've tried to source patterns that have got a great size inclusivity and that um, I know that have worked well when I've sewn them up and I've really enjoyed um, making and wearing them. So the first one I've got on today is, um, there's gonna be a lot of peppermint patterns. I know you guys all love those peppermint patterns because they are tried and tested. Every time I've made a peppermint pattern, I've been really happy with them. And they are predominantly um, in the folds. If you look up in the folds, the designer that's um, made these, every, every issue of Peppermint magazine that comes out, which is quarterly, will promote a new free pattern. And the last issue, I think it was a free linen dress. It's a gorgeous maxi long dress with the thicker wide straps and a really low back. So I'd be interested to know if any of you have made that and what you've thought about it. It looks really nice on the um, on the picture. So let me know if you've made that Today one. Today I've got on the pep, uh, peplum top, I'll give you a little bit of a twirl of that one. Um, it's got a lovely little flounce on the bottom and I've made it in like a Georgette fabric that I had actually left over from a dress that I made a while back. Um, it's got, I'll just give you a quick twirl in it. It's got a, um, a lower V at the back and a rounded neck. Sorry, Meg's been running around. She um, hears the garbage truck go past the street and that's her signal to go a bit crazy. So she's puffed out. So <laughs> sorry, that's annoying you. Um, so with the peplum top, um, it has a vice binding on the neckline. So it's a nice round kind of a mid scoop neckline and the back comes down to a V. So um, it has got a seam line through the middle of the back, but I'm pretty sure you could do that without the seam line if you wanted to do the V at the front and swap it around. Because as you'll see, there's no darts on this. Um, so it's, it's quite a simple pattern to make. And the flounce, when I actually made it the first time, I lengthened it and because I just do that. I just have a habit of lengthening tops. And when I got it on, I thought, no, it's ruined, ruined the look of it. So I brought it back to what the pattern had suggested and had the shorter um, flounce, which I think works a lot better. So um, I'll pop some pictures up of me in this one. Um, it doesn't take much fabric. I think it was like a 1.5. Um, the, the flounce isn't too gathered. So there's not a lot of bulk around um, the gather line. The softer drapier fabric you use will give it a nice soft effect. This one comes in a size range from 6 to 24, so very, um, very good size range. And I think it would work well in um, a basic, like a cotton or linen uh, fabric as well. Although the flounce won't be quite as drapey, it'll be a little bit stiffer. And you'll see that the gathers will be more of like a pleat, lovely, cool little top. And it's um, also the sort of thing that you could wear over, as I said, I've got one today with jeans, um, but you know, shorts for summer and that type of thing. And I actually have seen people hack this into a dress just by lengthening the flounce, which is really easy to do because it's just two rectangles sewn together and gathered. Um, yeah, so the, having the pre-made bias binding will make it a really speedy sew as well. I'll move on to the next pattern. The next pattern you'll see, I have made this before and I have talked about it in a previous episode, but this is the um, ruffle sleeve top. This I've done in a cotton linen blend and I really like this on with, it's like a boxy style top. Um, I like it on with my lander high-waisted uh, jeans. It's got a rounded V-neck, so not, not a sharp V and the rounded back. It's got darts in the front and you've got your um, half length sleeve with the quite a lengthy ruffle on the side 
And that one you can do in short sleeves, you can lengthen the sleeves, you can actually do it without the ruffle if you wanted to do more of a boxy shape. Now it's got the uh, interfacing which is uh, the same fabric. It's like a half lined top so it gives you a really nice uh, structure. Uh, it would work well in a variety of fabrics. You could make this in um, in rayons, georgettes, um, even a chiffon if you had a uh, like a camisole top underneath it. I think it would work well in, yeah, as I say, linens or the cottons which I've used here as well. So it really can work well in a variety of fabrics. It goes from a size 6 to a size 24 as well. Um, so it's a very popular little pattern on Instagram too. I've noticed a lot of people have done many different hacks with that. And also I've seen it in made hacked into a dress as well in it with a ruffle on the bottom. You can shorten the front to like the mid length there and quite easily put a, a gathered skirt um, or a tiered gathered skirt on the bottom of that too. So um, a really nice shape and it's one I wear quite a lot too. Now my last episode, which I'll link if you guys haven't seen it, was the free scrap busting top that I've made a couple of these. So that's the Harvest Peppermint top as well. Uh, not as size inclusive, I think it goes up to a size 16, but as I say, very easy to uh, increase the size by hacking that, just, um, just grading up, no darts or no um, particular fitting. Uh, issues there so very easy to size up or down. I found a lot of lengthy pieces that were like half meter pieces I decided to make into the harvest stop. Um, really happy with that. I've worn that quite a bit too. Uh, I've seen a lot of people doing this. I said the denim um, denim yoke on the front looks great as well so that's you'll see that in my episode. Um, have a little look at that and get some inspiration there to maybe use up your scraps as well. Another free popular top you might have seen online was from the Avid Seamstress. That is the drop shoulder um, sleeve top. Now I made this in a rayon that I had um, recycled from a, a long skirt that I hadn't worn much so I decided to use that big long full skirt and make it into the uh, to the Avid Seamstress drop shoulder top and comes in a size 6 to size 22 so very um, good on the sizes there. The only thing I will say with this I was a little bit concerned with sizing because it didn't look as roomy as some of the peppermint patterns I've sewn. Um, I found the I did the size 16 so I actually sized up in this and I found the sleeves to be quite white fitted um, a little bit more fitted than what i thought they would be so i'm glad i sized up i wouldn't have wanted to um to go by my normal size 14 um, because i would have found it quite restrictive um, it's not a boxy top it has more of a fitted um, shape even though there are no darts uh in it it's just it's more of a curved um shell top almost style and um i just did it exactly the same length and everything but i think Next time if I made it, I would probably go up a size to the size 18 and I probably would lengthen it a little bit too because I tend to wear my tops a little bit longer for wearing over pants and shorts. So they're either going to be for me long or boxy and short. Oh, those in between length tops. But I know for people um, if they're working and maybe wearing a suit to work or a professional type of outfit, that that kind of mid length would work perfectly for under blazers and that sort of thing. So there are really people out there that are wanting um, almost like the business attire look um, in the styling of, of, of a top. So they don't always want tunic style tops. It really just depends on your wardrobe and what you need out of there. So the Avid Seamstress top yeah, has got a facing as well. You could easily do it with bias binding. Be really easy to um, to use that instead. And yeah, and just an unusual drop, drop shoulder with the sleeve on the end of it. But you'll see there that the, um, yeah, it's, it's not a really wide sleeve. If you find that you need a bit more room in the arms like I do, I would definitely increase the size and maybe increase the width. Um, that would be really easy to hack into a ruffle sleeve as well or like a bell sleeve or that kind of thing so um look that one up as well another similar top to this one i was actually thinking about making but i noticed a lot of people have already made it and done reviews on it um so i i just thought i'd link a review and that is from um lifting pins and needles karina has done this particular york top from Seamwork, very similar to this style, um, the Avid Seamstress. But the York top, um, I've seen a lot of reviews on that and a lot of people love that pattern. It's a similar, yes, yeah, sort of more of a streamlined look with the three quarter sleeve, but a bit more detail on the cuff, has like a little split cuff on there um, and the tie back as well. This one, I actually, um, you didn't really need to have the button at the back. It does say you can put a little split and button a tie or a tie, but I didn't think you really needed it. It's got quite a wide neckband but if you prefer that you can easily add that in as a feature. And another popular woven pattern on the seam work is the sorbetto top 
in a woven as well. It's got the uh, little placket on the front and people have done it in uh, sleeveless and one with little cut sleeves as well. So that's uh, another popular um, kind of mid-length style top to try out. Now another free top pattern I've made in the past, you guys might have seen my episode with uh, Alyssa Shea from the uh, Thoughtful Creativity channel on YouTube. We did a collab um, before Christmas with this top. This is the Miss Calypso top. Uh, it's a French pattern. I'll link all the patterns here underneath so you guys can see those. Now the Miss Calypso top, again, not great on sizes. I had to use the bigger size, which was a 14 to 16, which was, you know, not great. Um, I actually graded it up and size wise and I actually changed the line of the bottom to be more of an A-line shape because it was a lot more fitted than what um, what I usually wear and I found that quite challenging too because it has lining on the inside and it has the bow on the back so when you when you go to do the burrito method and turn it all inside out it, it can be quite challenging for a beginner um, I'm really happy with how it came out in this um, Lady McElroy fabric it's just a nice simple top and again a nice sort of thing to wear for under a jacket or a suit um, definitely uh, I love this top I probably wouldn't make it again only because it's not my um, kind of length of top that I'd normally wear but in saying that I have worn it a little bit with my um, chambray Winslow collots because they're high-waisted they've got a lot of pleating on the front it's that nice little um, sort of slim fitting top that can show off the, the wide leg pants so uh, now one of the newer patterns from peppermint would be the wrap style top um, I decided to make one of those as well. I really like the look of the linen in that, but I didn't have any linen in my stash. I did have a rayon, uh, almost like a uh, crepey kind of crinkle, a little bit see-through. And I decided this would be a really good idea to wear over like dresses that are summery or strappy that when it gets cool at night, you can actually accessorize and wrap that around. Or even with, um, I've got a few of those ruffled tiered long skirts that are quite busy and I think it works perfectly with that with a little camisole underneath so you can really let the skirt shine for itself it's a nice simple design and I think everyone needs some kind of wrap style top or dress in their wardrobe because they are just classic they um they are sort of thing that come in every year year after year you'll see wrap style dresses and skirts they accentuate a nice shape as well so I've seen them on all different shapes and sizes and I think they work really well um, the difference that I did with this one, I actually hacked a ruffle on the end of the sleeve because I just felt it was a little bit lacking. Um, it was the sleeve just kind of hung. Um, if you had a linen, you wouldn't need to do that. But with this particular fabric, I think the um, the ruffle works really well in this this nice drapey looking fabric. And that was just just by putting two rectangles gathered and um, you know fitting them around the base of the sleeve really really easy to make didn't even have by i thought it would have bias binding but it didn't i think you could probably use bias binding if you wanted to but it just folded in on itself a couple of times so really simple a really simple make a good beginner pattern and a great a really great length as well um, i think it's not too short a lot of the wrap tops i find are way too short and way too low cut whereas this one gives a nice coverage at the front you don't have to worry about everything gaping out but um, because of my sort of sheer fabric, I decided to put the cami underneath anyway, just to complement um, the skirt that I had with it. But um, that one again, size six to size 22. So a fantastic size range in that. And yeah, really simple, basically two long front strips uh, and you add the, the long tie strips onto the front piece. So quite easy to make that. And then you've just got a back piece and you've got darts in the front pieces just to give you that little bit of shape under the bust. But yeah, really, really simple, easy to whip up. Um, and I think a plain black and a plain white of these are kind of a staple thing that you want to have, especially if you're like me and you have a lot of print pants and print skirts and you find that you've got so many prints and not enough planes to, to tie back with them. So that's a really great little style to try for free. Now the last top I'm thinking of is the Athena top by Tazuti Patterns. Again, it's only up to a size 16. Um, that's one I've actually been wanting to try that has um, got a lovely long streamlined shape to it as well. Now so. the last pattern I've chosen is actually a dress pattern on the Peppermint website. You'll see the everyday dress pattern. This could easily be hacked into a top. It's a very straightforward tunic style dress that you, um, I've actually made the belt the belt wasn't on the pattern but I think it definitely needs a belt of some kind because it doesn't have any shaping in it at all it's very very um, tunic style shaped 
um, without any kind of darts or uh, any shaping, it can look a little bit like a hospital gown. I think that the belt does wonders and it's very similar to the Wixton shift dress I think without a belt that to um, the longer style dress it really needs a belt to accentuate and cinch you in um, the shorter Wixton I've seen um, looks looks fine without the belt but once you start getting a longer tunic dress and it doesn't have a belt or it doesn't have any shaping yeah it can really look a little bit hospital gownish so I think um, the belt can really make this now this I really like the style of this it's got um, all the sleeves it's all in one so it's like a grown on sleeve kimono shaped so no separate sleeves no darts no um no sort of fitting issues there that the the nice feature i think on this is the bottom of the skirt the bottom of the dress has got like that beautiful side split I'll show you the bottom uh, stitching detail there on the side split that really gives a lovely feature to the dress and also the neck facing you'll see the good thing about this is that it's totally reversible so you can wear the v front Give you a little look at the v front or you can turn the dress around because there's no darts at all you can quite easily turn the dress around and make it the round neck at the front so that's really up to you what how you want to wear it um i've seen it on both ways and i like both ways actually i haven't got a preference but um you could quite easily do this in a top and cut it off shorter now that one again is not a size inclusive it's a size 8 to a size 16 but because there are no um no fitting problems on there and no shaping i think you can quite easily grade that one up as well you're definitely worth a try now i sized down in this it was really a large pattern it has a lot of ease in it um i normally make the size four i think in the peppermint patterns and i went down to a size three and it was still really bigger in the middle so i took in a good inch on either side just to give it that tiny bit of shaping but it's the kind of thing that you could quite easily adapt and put uh, fisheye darts in the back uh, and as i say put, once i put the belt on it didn't really matter anyway so um i really like this fabric too this color is in for the season it's that kind of lilac-y dusky pinky mauvey color um, it's really a nice sort of a warm colored pink. I'm not really a pink wearer, but I love like coral pinks. Um, I don't really wear pastel pinks, but I love this sort of more of an earthy dusky pink and lots of lilacs are in for winter. I'll notice, um, that you guys over in, um, the Northern hemisphere have been putting up a lot of beautiful lilac colored fabrics. I'm totally jealous. I'm looking myself over here and I've noticed that quite a bit of that color um is coming out for our winter as well so fingers crossed i'll be able to land some of that soon so i hope you guys have enjoyed that they're the patterns that i know worked for me um hopefully they'll work for you as well and don't forget also try and use fabric that you have in your stash or fabric you've had lying around for a little while to give a little bit of a test run make maybe make a twill up first and if you really love the pattern you will make it again and again and i know for example the um the ruffle sleeve linen um the teal color top i have already got planned I'm making uh, a black one of that as well because I think it's a great basic to have in your wardrobe so there's certain ones there that I know I will definitely make again and other ones maybe not but um, the one I've got on with the peplum on the bottom I think I would make, try making this in a dress maybe for next summer I think it's a, a really comfortable easy style to make as well so um but yeah pop, pop onto the peppermint website and see how you go there also the avid seamstress the um with the drop sleeve top and uh seam work patterns as well um they are all very size inclusive and all free patterns so take advantage of that thank you so much for watching today i hope you enjoyed that and don't forget if you want to see more of my upcoming episodes to click and subscribe to my channel give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and i'll see you again shortly for a new episode bye for now